Coming up in this video, I'll show you how I paint Bladegeist Revenants for the Night Haunt faction of Age of Sigmar. Welcome back, mini junkies. My name is Jarrett. Uh, so the timing of the 500th store uh, commemorative miniature uh, on the Age of Sigmar side was great because I actually was just going to be doing my Bladegeist tutorial and it's a Bladegeist model. The main point I want to make about this paint job before we get into the tutorial is that when it comes to um, an army, whether it's Space Marines or Night Haunts or, you know, uh, Stormcast Eternals, there's usually going to be a defining element of the paint job that you want to stick to. And then outside of that, you have room and flexibility to kind of mix things up between units, between characters and, and types of maybe vehicles. So uh, here's an example. For my night haunts, the defining element that ties the whole army together is the P3 Privateer Press Paint Eldritch colored uh, ethereal portions of the creature. So the ghostly ethereal wispy stuff. So anytime, maybe with the exception of Lady Alinder, uh, who's a little different, but anytime I paint night haunts, I'm going to be using that color for their ghostly part. However, that doesn't mean that every time they get up out of bed in the morning, they all put on the same black capes and cloaks, right? They could be different. And that allows you to, again, inject a little bit of uh, visual interest, a little bit, break up the monotony and, and make it so it's not just one big sea of the same colored stuff. Now the reason I say that is in this case, with this model, I decided to go a little darker on the on the cloak than I have been. And you'll see how in a sec. And again, because his ethereal portions are the same as the rest of the army, he'll blend in perfectly. And, and again, even with some of the other guys that are gonna be coming up, I haven't done the whole army yet. Maybe I'll do a dark brown cloak or I'll start to mix it up even more or different kinds of trim and things like that. Just so that, you know, each each one has its own little bit of character in addition to looking like he fits in. Now, just before we get into it, if you're a fan of the hobby of painting miniatures and war games and painting board game miniatures, consider subscribing and clicking the bell notification so you don't miss any of my videos. And for no particular reason, I'm gonna be doing a giveaway with this video, not a subscriber milestone giveaway or anything like that. I just kind of wanted to, uh, and I got a kind of a cool prize, so if you wait till a little bit further in the video or cheat and scroll through, you'll see me uh, give you some information on how to enter and how to, how to win this prize. So with that tantalizing bit of information, let's get right to the painting. Okay everyone, here's a look at the finished miniature we're going to be working on today. After priming it black, we're going to give the cloak or cape on top of him a base coat of Incubi Darkness. Then I highlight that with some airbrushed Stegodon Stale Green in a few of the raised areas and on top of the back. In the past, Stegodon Scale Green was my starting point, so we started one step darker with the Incubi. In the past, I've also started with the P3 Eldritch on the ethereal parts, and then I would use the Ulth 1 Grey like I am now and get white speckles all over the green. So I'm doing it the other way around and starting with the Ulth 1 Grey. You can also hand paint this on. I like P3 Eldritch for these guys so much I pre-mixed a batch for airbrushing and I airbrushed that into the area between the upper cloak or cape and the um, Wolf One Grey ethereal part and I'm pretty imprecise here. I don't care if some of it gets onto the cloak because it's supposed to blend. If you're hand brushing this you would need to thin it quite a lot with some glaze medium and glaze that area between the Wolf One Grey and the P3 Eldritch. Now I highlight that cloak with Sotek green and I do this as a dry brush um, you can also absolutely just layer it for a nicer and cleaner look but I tend to move quickly on these night haunts and I found the dry brushing was working just fine especially for these cloaks um, and then towards the end I actually dabbed it fairly heavily where there's a joint I did try to fill that joint with with plastic putty but it was still showing a bit so I just filled that in with some of the paint decided to try out a new paint here it's p3 deathless metal it's a really kind of a almost a purpley dark bronze color really really nice color and I decided to use that on the chains so I just base coat all the chains with that then continuing to mix it up I tried beaten purple as the trim around the cape or around the cowl uh, you could use really any color you like here. You want to be in the purple or reddish area so that it has a nice contrast with the greenish dark colors we're using. P3 Boiler Black is my new favorite gunmetal style paint. It's darker than a lead belcher, but you could still use lead belcher for sure uh, for this step. 
and I pretty much just base coat all the, the hooks and the blades of the weapons and his mask. There's always a few boring steps. The first one here is Mechanicus Standard Gray and I base coat the tombstone with that. The arms are base coated with P3 Underbelly Blue. Alright guys, so as I said at the start of the video, I have a giveaway to do with this one. Uh, I am going to give away the 500 store limited Night Haunt Garcor Blade Geist Revenant sealed. You can see it's shiny, it's still in the shrink wrap. I'm going to give that away and a pot of P3 Eldritch because I know that a lot of people post comments or send me messages they have trouble finding this when they want to follow my painting guide. So I'll send you a pot to get you started and this will pretty much last you a whole army because it goes a long way. To enter, you don't have to be a subscriber, there's no rules, you don't have to pay to enter, all the disclaimers. All you got to do is post a comment below and you have to post in that comment how I can reach you. Now by that I don't mean your phone number or your email but post whether you follow Mini Junkie on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter, post your Twitter handle, your Facebook name, your uh, Instagram handle, just some way that I can reach you if you win uh, because there's no real easy way for me to message you. And if I say message me, we could have people being sneaky and messaging me who aren't actually the winner. And then I'm just going to pick a random comment below and we'll all pay shipping and we'll send it out. I'm going to do that draw on October 31st so that'll be easy to remember because it's my birthday and it's also Halloween. All right let's get back to the video. Moving right along I take a silver color. I'm using mithril silver. You could use a storm host silver for example and I stipple that onto the blades of the weapons and onto the hooks. Uh, and I focus the stippling hev more heavily as I get to the sharper parts or the pointy end of the, s of the sword. This is to create underpainting and we're going to come back and glaze that later. I also use the silver to highlight the mask. Now I'm going to apply nylock oxide to that deathless metal on the chains and what I do is I wash it heavily right out of the bottle over it and then I wipe my finger along the surface. I do this all with all the nylock oxide I use. Uh, to wipe it off the raised surfaces and just leave it in the recessed areas. Now I use Nuln Oil to shade the purple trim around the cowl and also to pull out the eye sockets and a little bit of engraving on the mask. Very optional step here, I used a Thonian camo shade and I washed the uh, tombstone to give it a bit of a greenish tint. To tarnish the weapons and anything uh, with that metal color I used sepia ink green ink and yellow ink and I just noticed that's black green but I meant to use green. I use one drop of each and I just paint it right over those to create that sort of tarnished old look. On the sword blade I paint it on and then I would wipe with my finger along the upper half of it and along the edge to kind of wipe some of it off and create some shine and, and some, some edge to it. You could use any gold you like. I'm using negro gold from scale 75 as it feels appropriate for the undead. I think uh, Privateer has a nice sort of necrotic looking gold, but you could use any gold you want here really. This goes on weapon hilts and on his like crown. Xerius Purple from GW is my first highlight on the trim and it's so close to the beaten purple we used to base it. You could almost use this as your base coat. It's kind of, it didn't show up much. The next highlight of Gene Steeler Purple shows up much better and I use that on edges, etc. And you know, the upper portions of where, you know, the upper folds of the trim is where you want to highlight. After the Null Noil, I wasn't satisfied with his mask, so I went back with the silver and further defined the eye sockets and the sort of teeth. It's almost like a Punisher face on this guy. I think I missed a step in the video, so you need to wash his arms with the Nylac Oxide and not wipe it off with your finger, despite what I said, and then when that's dry you're going to come back and highlight that with the Underbelly Blue. A few very strategic highlights of the ethereal part with Goss Blaster Green. I've seen some people really edge highlight the crap out of the ethereal part and that just doesn't look right to me because they're not really, they're supposed to be almost smoky. Another boring step, take Administratum Grey or Light Grey of your choice and dry brush or highlight the tombstone. Oh, this is too boring in a row. Uh, Lauren Forest was the base coat I used for the vines. 
To highlight the Negro Gold, I added P3 Radiant Platinum, and I, you can see, I think, in the video how I used just the, the end of a coffee stir stick, just a tiny bit of the Radiant Platinum, and I go in there twice with that. I still think I didn't lighten it enough to make it show up. So it, it's there, but I think you could lighten it even more, and I encourage you to do so when you highlight the gold. I do this more and more with my figures. I take uh, Vallejo Game Ink Black and I use it to do some black lining in various, you know, to separate areas. In the video, it sure looks dark and it's, you know, it looks like it's going on messy and dark. But what I like about the black ink is it, it dries uh, more faded, so it kind of blends in more nicely. And I also painted that into some of the um, deeper folds of his cloak. I wash the vines with Ethonian Camo Shade. And then I highlight the thorns and the raised portions with Elysian Green. I base them the same as I based all the night haunts, and that starts with Dark Earth Vallejo Texture Paste, which I paint on with an old brush, and I use that to blend the basing into the pre-sculpted portion of the model, that stuff around the tombstone and the vines. And then when that's dry, I come back and dry brush it heavily with XV88, and then when that is dry, I come back again and dry brush with GW Karak Stone, and I finish the base with some tufts. And here's the finished model, guys. I'm pretty happy with how he turned out, although I do think I want to go even darker on those up, that upper uh, cloak for future Night Haunt models that I'll do. Don't forget to post below to enter for the giveaway for, this, for a new version of this model. I enjoyed painting this guy. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, consider liking and sharing if you did. It helps the channel grow. And hey, if you're feeling super crazy, even subscribe because there'll be more videos coming up. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next video.